and this is post-production Andrew here to tell you guys that I am an idiot. So this is Josh Richards, BJJ's YouTube channel. This is the guy that sent the video in, and we're planning on doing some more stuff together in the future. He mentioned coming out the train. Uh, he's going to make his own video on the review that I did. And he sent me a message that said his arm was a little bit hurt in this first video, so he wasn't going super hard, and I just completely glossed over that. And it got buried behind 100,000 messages, and I didn't see it. So I'm hypercritical in this video. Um, you should take that into account for the rest of the video, okay? And also, while you're here, go ahead and check out his channel. It's Josh Rich BJJ. He has 31,900 subscribers. Now he has 31,901. And if you haven't already do it, go over there. Seems like a really cool guy. And like I said, he's going to be coming out to train at some point. So let's get into the fucking hypercritical review of the kid who has a hurt arm. Alright everybody, I haven't slept in a long time and we are doing a good one this time, okay? We have the man himself, Joshua from YouTube, okay? Let's see what we've got going on and just so you guys know, me and Bird are playing with some new software to make this even better and it's making our system faster, we can get a lot more content out, we can get a better idea of what we're trying to get across to you guys and I have a new webcam, and I don't know if it's any good, so this is actually my first time using it. So let's jump into this. So we're doing positional rounds, and we're starting in mount. Okay. You've got good feet positioning. Uh, I'm turning this side. That's fine. Oh, that's a, we got to punish that. Okay, yeah, let's go back. All right, so fun fact, okay, and this is something you can really just do basically from anywhere in Nogi. Okay, if you can reach through and you can hook this wrist anywhere. Okay, so like, right now if you can take this arm, reach through and hook this wrist, you're basically on his back, okay? That is gonna be your control point. Um, it's gonna completely prevent him from turning into you and he's not really gonna be able to turn the other way either. You will just start to slide that hook in and follow him or what you can do is take your arm that you've hooked this with, start to kind of straighten it out when you have to, this hook, after you hook this, That'll take his shoulder and that will start to flatten into the mat and that's going to give you good back chases too. So, you tried to catch it. It looks like you went for it. Um, something you, I have to do a lot because <laughs> I was not genetically gifted is take my other hand and just kind of feed this in at the same time. So I almost have to just kind of smack it to my other hand. Um, this is something that taller people don't have to deal with but, you know, they get blessed doubled. So, you know, give and take. Honestly, uh... We shouldn't really let anyone kind of sit up on us like that or turn that much on their side without us control pointing them. Like, if I don't like the guy being on this side right now, I can come down and start to club his head this way and turn his face away. Uh, you should already be kind of transitioning to an S mount in this position right now. Like, this is what I would normally do because I just don't want him to get that butterfly hook with this leg anywhere or push me into a quarter guard or a half guard. So if you've ever seen me do that pivot that I do, where it's like I take my left leg and it goes into the pocket with my heel and I just make sure there's no space. I take my knee, okay, so it'd be my left knee. I'm going to take it and uh, kind of pinch it down to his body. And then you'll see I use my left arm to kind of close off a little bit of that gap so he can't just reach through it. And then this leg just kind of comes up. It can slide up a little bit higher. Like you can bring it up here and kind of pinch pressure in and it gives you pretty good control. A lot of times when they try to turn back into you the other way, you just kind of go back down a mount. A lot of times they just kind of give up their back too. That would have been a good time to just triangle him, too. Okay. Let's get aggressive. There we go. Now we can start to walk up. I said... We can start to walk up. Okay. Um... Low mount can be okay if the guy is bridging and bucking and going crazy, but uh, generally it's not going to be the greatest submission point. You're not going to get the best uh, like transitions to, to the back or an armbar setups or anything really like that. You're not going to be able to go for triangles or threaten anything like that. So like when I'm in mount, my whole goal is just to continuously march forward. I'm always kind of doing this little uh, this little crank maneuver where it's like, I'll make some space somewhere, or he'll make the space for me by bridging or bucking or, you know, like what you're doing right here is perfect, or you're hooking his elbow and you're starting to walk it up towards his head and that's just creating this huge space line right now. But, okay, your mats look pretty slippery right now and they don't look like they have much traction and this is obviously something I've had to deal with a lot in my life. So what I do is every time I come up a little bit, 
I start to re-pinch my knees between them and what I'll do is actually take my foot and I won't even put it on the mat a lot of times or if I do I will actually be on my toes okay so my toes will be here but my heel will actually hook into his uh, his thigh here because what he's gonna do is try to get you back down to a low mount and he's either gonna do that by trying to push you down somewhere which you're already kind of blocking and you're with how you have control of this underhook and this isn't really gonna do too much right here um, the other way he's gonna get you down is by actually trying to scooch himself up towards you and by putting your foot up here every time he scooches both of you guys scooch with him and it just makes it a lot easier to not lose positions um you see how you're kind of like trading off your knee pressure for grapevines right here that's not really something you want to do uh it doesn't add any pressure to the match and i don't necessarily think it gives you more control it, the thing is like these are beatable and it doesn't really matter if you're winning the grapevine battle if he does actually get your hip line or your thighs up on his thighs anywhere and starts to do a kipping escape so definitely start climbing up on this guy Another thing I like to do, I know I'm talking a lot, uh, that's kind of the point though, isn't it? I like to take my other hand, like right now you're doing fantastic with this, but my other hand I actually block the top of his head like this a lot. Okay, or if I don't have his arm trapped in the way that you do, I'll take both my hands and block it, and that's just another control point to prevent him from uh, sliding up relative to me. You know, so like when he starts to use his feet to push up, because I'm blocking his head right here it's going to put all that pressure into my hands it's going to drag me along with him and that lets me keep a lot more pressure on his rib line and shoulder line as I start to advance ah way too loose there way too loose okay I didn't actually get to see what was going on on the other side but it couldn't be that much I mean his arms okay you uh actually just made a lot of space so the name of the game is pressure uh gordon has this 100 percent right um when he decided to develop his body in a way that maximized isometric squeeze for nogi okay um isometric squeeze is gonna be your like you you need that to consistently beat good guys you know flow is great and flow gets you uh, to a lot of positional advantages but then you won't be able to hold them or stick that and really capitalize on it without the pressure so uh, the best way to get really good at holding people in mount, especially in Nogi, is to just squeeze them to death and make that part of your default pressure. So every time you get to mount for like a couple weeks, don't even worry about getting a submission, don't even worry about, uh, well, you should try to advance, but just practice taking your knees and just absolutely crushing every one of your training partner's ribs. They won't like you, you might not have any friends left, but after you win all the tournaments, you know, they'll come around. Everyone loves winners, so... Hmm. Okay, so he got you to post your hand, and uh, this is another thing a lot of people don't really think about. Like, people might kind of be aware of this, but not to the extent that I see them intentionally setting it up. When you get someone to post their hands on the mat, or post their feet on the mat, or you get them to lift their hips higher off of you, what you actually do is you, you weaken their pinch, okay? So, like, when you put your hand on the mat over here, that took a lot of weight off your knees, and, it, and if you weren't like overcompensating by pinching harder so lots of pinch then you're more likely to get lifted off so that's why to get away from mount you do a combination of bridges and bucks into shrimps back into those if they don't work that way you're constantly weakening the guy's legs so you might actually be able to escape i also don't really let people ever frame two on one on one leg uh because if you just try to control his head he's kind of for sure gonna push one side off okay so that's not really going to ever cut it. So you need to be preemptively kind of pulling one of his hands off or underhooking one of those sides and starting to really frame. He already got your knee line out to the outside. So like all he's got to do is just get a little bit of space this way and his knee's coming in. So that would have been something we had to prevent a little bit earlier. Damn you, Ken, and your good amount of escapes. Okay, let's start working up. So like right now, you see the space? Whoops. We don't want that space. We want smash. There you go. Now hook it. Now hook it. Okay. This is good still. We're going to get this. Okay. We need to adjust our angle sooner. So, that that was a... Uh, we, we missed a little bit of an opportunity, but you did kick up to S mount right there. Okay. And that that's another one of the squeeze positions. Like, 
this arm being here doesn't matter. Um, what he's doing over here is not so important. What you really needed to do is, is just squeeze the fuck out of him again, you know? This knee goes into the pocket and applies pressure this way. Um, this knee really starts to pinch in, and a lot of times you'll actually get people to turn their arm. And that's when we get to kind of choose what attack we want to go for. There's a lot of options. Uh, you can play with kind of rolling people in Noble Plotus from there. Not the best idea because you do have mount. You have to be really, really confident about finishing your own plata. Um, you can reach over and Kimura it. Yeah, if you look at some of my videos, I uh, I wrist lock children from there because I can. Okay, just at me, bro. <laughs> um, and then you can always kind of switch your legs back into uh, a triangle from there, or you could switch an armbar this arm. But we need to really keep our pressure back down on him, keep him flat. So you are, in every single time, immediately pushing the arm down to the mat, and that's not bad at all, okay? And he hasn't really contested that too much either times that I've seen you do it. So you're either doing it really well, or he's just not really too concerned about it. Um, you're doing a lot of cross-gripping too, and I know Gordon really likes to do that. It's actually fantastic. So, like, in this situation, I think he's going to try to kipping escape you in a second, but no, he's not. You actually got his head. I don't really let people keep their hands on my hips too much, like... Um, you have pretty good control on this side. If you just kind of slid this arm back down around his elbow, you could pull it past you. Or if you just kind of reach back and pull that past you. Like, you want him to kind of hug you and mount because that's just separating his elbows from his uh, body. And that gives you that space to kind of climb up. There you go. See, that's the kind of block I would do to start climbing. And that was good. Like, if you can just take that away, this is going to be your S-mount transition. Keep, keep walking that in. I need to remember to always pause the video every time I do that. And I don't really care that he's going to try to buck me at this point. Because you should be um, disconnecting when he goes to do that. So a lot of times what's happening is you are connected to him. But you're not connected in the right way. Okay, Connected in the right way would be either your hip pressure genuinely pushing through him into the mat with a lot of pressure. That way when he goes to bridge, there's already counter pressure in place and you're not reacting after the fact. Okay, or you can do uh, the strategic disconnect that I talk about, where you, you normally know which way they're going to buck. Like, you see him loading up this this leg first, you can always feel them do it, and especially with your foot in the area. Like, you did feel him loading up to go this way. Okay, so what that means is you just need to prepare a little bit, and what that meant is you were going to actually slide up to S-mount with this being the leg that clamps around, okay, and this being the one that just slides up. And you have to feel the pressure start to go, and you're actually going to disconnect your hips as you twist, and you're going to end up facing the direction he's trying to bridge you. And again, you're either going to slide all the way up an S-mount if you feel really secure and you have a smooth transition, or you're just going to end up with your foot lodged into that hip line like we were talking about earlier. And you just don't take the bridge pressure, so you don't ever really lose uh, your mount strength. Okay, you got that. Keep going. Keep rotating on him. Okay, if we, had, if we had rotated just a little bit earlier, we would have been fine here. Yep. Um, you honestly probably could have just took him back this way, too. Um, because your hip is in it, like, your knee's in a pretty good spot, and it looks like you could kind of take this arm and apply pressure down. Honestly, I think you could go either way, but, like, this grip's not going to stop him from rotating into you, so you really have to kind of take his head and don't drag it into you right now because he'll keep turning and that won't really help drag it a little bit past you and use that space to get a big rotation behind him and he's gonna roll through okay there's not really a lot you can do to stop that but you can always kind of take this and um, switch it to like a like a top baron bolo redive like the mendez brothers do or like i do from side control and uh i talk about it somewhere okay when, when i'm talking about nogi back control in a youtube video but you can do that, or you can just kind of do the chase where you guys are just continuously re-rolling until one of you finally gets ahead of the other. But I don't really want to end up back on my back like this if I'm in, uh, if I'm in mount. That's just a tragedy. You ever been so tired you forgot a, a regular word? Who would do something like that? Okay. Get these hands off you right now. Like, what you can do is you can honestly, like, apply pressure over here, and you can start to pull. Like, you, you, this hand right now can just hook this wrist, start to pull it up, 
and then pull it through. Like use your knee pressure to really push that past and then he doesn't have a good frame and you're already threatening taking his back on this side. He'll probably take this shoulder and start to put it back down towards the mat. Um, pushing his wrist across there is fine, but you're not pressuring him enough to take advantage of it. So what I mean? Like when, when Gordon's pinning his wrist on that other side, he is a wet blanket except the blanket's actually like a ton, you know, it's just this insane amount of pressure that is constantly adjusting and moving uh, whichever direction you go because pressure slows things down and you can react faster to feel than you can to visual. Okay, there's actually a really fun back chase you can do from here too. Um, if you keep rotating this way, okay, let's go back one second. You'll see it, like his top leg being over top of his bottom leg okay that's what gives me the angle to roll through to the back chase and that's actually what you're going to set up when you end up sliding down on his knees here so if you kept rotating a little bit what you would do is take your top leg hook um, not a super deep hook just kind of hook it with your little a little bit lower on your calf maybe the middle of your calf and you're actually going to front roll underneath him and use uh that hook to drag him into a barren bolo again it's just a way to get back into the uh to a more dominant position than side control. Although, going to side control is not a terrible idea because you can genuinely hold side control if you have good pressure and you can start to work your way to the better position again. There you go. Now, S-mount, S-mount, S-mount. He, you have a fantastic position right now. There, there is nothing stopping you from taking both of the shoulder lines right now. And that's what I would advise to do. I would advise people to practice their transition to S-mount, especially for Nogi because you want really secure positions and submissions that don't really risk you giving up your position, okay? And because we don't have a ton of options, no gi for good submissions uh, like we do in the gi, you kind of have to get good at what is actually viable. So S-mount armbars are going to be a high percentage move. Gordon tapped couch just with the pressure and the threat of the armbar. You know, it's a, it is effective and I definitely think everyone should be in the, have it in their arsenal. But let's look at the gap on your knees right now. You see this lack of pressure going on? That is not okay. Like, we do want to fix that. You really need to start pinching those in. Yep. It's all this space that's letting them get that much rotation and get that much uh, movement before you're able to really react. You pressure, 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 pressure. And if you don't want to go up to S-mount right now, this is the side I'd be targeting. Okay, like, you're going to put whatever you have the most attachment point, and I'm pretty sure it's right here. You are going to start to drive in that direction. You're going to loosen up the other side, and you're going to let yourself kind of rotate through. And then what you're going to do, like, that will get him to turn over a little bit, all right? And then you quickly go back behind and get lower, okay? You actually want to end up with your chest almost behind his shoulder line. And then you just kind of keep re-pushing him. You readjust, re-push him, readjust, re-push him, and eventually... You'll feel comfortable enough to go for a, bull, a full slide under back chase, or he'll try to roll through and he'll give up his back, or he might get, kind of slip back, turning back and you try to get his shoulder down, but that's no big deal. It just means we didn't get the back chase yet. There we go. Now, I'm going to let this play out and then I'm going to go back and we're going to talk about that transition. And I'm going to talk about what I do in this situation when I run into similar shit like this. But I do want to see what happens. Man, he's a scrambly mother. Nice, nice fucking catch right there, dude. Oh no! <laughs> okay, let's go back. Uh, so let's start with the transition. You did it finally, and I was very happy. But one motion. Pause, two motions, okay? That is, and like, you are only able to get away with this right now because of the absolutely insane amount of control you have with your upper body. But you don't want to have to rely on that. What if your hands were busy doing something else? What if they were applying pressure somewhere else? Or what if he bridged you and you wanted to actually capitalize on it instead of just uh, stopping him from getting out and you slide up to S mount, okay? We need to practice this transition until you can do it at the same time. Like, this leg starts the transition, this leg follows it up, and at the end, you should have so much pinch pressure the motherfucker doesn't get to move. 
And now another thing that you're not doing that I do, okay, you're keeping your knee on the ground here. And that's not what I normally do. I actually bring my foot in as I do it, my knee comes up and I get a lot more pinch pressure. This pinch pressure here, and especially this curl pressure, and especially uh, the lower angled this is, the better. So if you look right now, you see your knee line is kind of angled up off the mat here instead of being down around this area. That is something you want to work on getting really, really smooth at keeping that low to the mat. And sometimes it's a flexibility issue. A lot of times it's just a general dexterity and uh, comfortability in like um, doing the move. It's just something you need to practice. So I would like to see this foot be a little closer. This knee line can come up and actually pinch around here and give you a little bit better control. Now, if you have a guy doing this type of shit, you can always, you know, kick your leg over and fall backwards and uh, try to finish your additional armbar. That's that's an option, okay? I, I don't want to do that normally. Uh, so what I like to do is I attack the top arm because he can't defend the top arm. He has committed himself to putting this arm under and with your knee pinch that you should have, he doesn't really get to switch which arms on top after you pinch. So right now I would take this hand and I would come in and I would I would peel that hand out okay um, you see how you come in from this side and you try to reach back and grab it I think I would have gone through this way and just started to peel it up and just instead of trying to grab his wrist because wrist control is kind of notoriously uh, unreliable nogi I would have just hooked his elbow so I would have gone from there up to an elbow hook and then what I actually would have done is spinning arm part him on the other side because if you think about it this leg, especially if you're up on your knee like I was saying, uh, all you have to do is transition this leg around to the other side of his head and let your body rotate. Okay, so your chest is going to end up facing that way and you can just fall back and attack this arm right here. And there's a lot of videos of me doing this no gi, there's a lot of videos of me doing this in the gi. It just prevents you from having to do this horrible fight that's going on right now. And you finally do it near the end, but you give him a little too much space. Another thing you could actually be doing, because you have so much control going on right now, is using your knee line, okay, when you're going out and disconnect from his hand, bring your knee line back to this side and then penetrate your knee line back under his hand, and then use your pinch pressure in to prevent him from reaching back under the thigh. And around that time is when you're switching your grips and getting ready to armbar the other arm, and it all just ties together really smoothly. Oof. So immediately you kind of fell off to the side, and your hips are free rotating. Um, you see the common thread in a lot of what's happening is you're just no, you just don't have the preventative pinch pressure with your knees and your thighs and your clamp, and we're kind of losing a lot of stuff based. I can't believe this. He got away from that, by the way. Let me go back. So, guys, want to hitchhike? What do we do? First off, um, you do a really, really good job of applying pressure here. I thought the triangle switch was brilliant. But the second his hips started going this way, you should have already been taking his arm down that way. Because if the guys want to hitchhike out this way and you apply the pressure the other way, it's not going to get them out. Okay, a lot of times you can prevent their hips from even rotating over and them getting on their feet or knees just with that pressure. Okay, so you see how you were just a second behind, you're already switching your grips, and he's out. Okay. You also are... Oh, actually, you are kind of fucked because your foot's stuck under him. But if you had recognized it, a lot of times you can just go belly back, go go back down belly down in the armbar, and you can roll through the armbar, and you can roll the guy over and finish it again. Uh, you can go straight Kimura trap from there, and you can start chasing a lot of stuff. You can chase the back, chase triangles. It really just opens up the doors to continue chasing a high percentage submission. But it's better if we don't give him the option to get out at all. Nice. Very nice. Fuck this hand. No! You don't want your hips down by there. You want to be climbing. Be climbing. Pinch, pinch, pinch. So, like, grapevines have a use. Um, but really, pressure is what's going to hold them out. Especially with how slippery it is here. There you go. There you go. Keep rotating. How do we... How the fuck did he get away from that? Okay, where did we go wrong there? So, he starts to turn away, you hook the arm, beautiful, okay, we go to transition, and I, I think what happens is you don't get enough of a slide through on this side, but let's go another second and freeze frame it, he's got his arm, yeah, it's not enough slide through, and I think we lost 
our control on this, or this wasn't a good enough control. That might be what it is. So, okay. Yep. So, you, you hooked a little bit high. Um, honestly, you want to hook down here because it's a significantly better control point. Because the high control point right here, he can actually just kind of straighten his arm, and you won't have the grip pressure and the pull pressure to keep your fingers from kind of just slipping off. Like, he'll actually be able to clear your arm entirely. Whereas when you're down here, it really, really prevents a lot of his rotational force. So that was a little bit of a misplay, and then you see how it broke the second he started to turn. Um, and then we lost our slide through. I think you might have been able to attack a Kimura Trap or an Armbar still, but it happened very, very quickly. <laughs> We're done fucking around, okay. Um, so, on the Americana there. Uh, first off, anyone that says key locks don't work, they have kind of a point, but not in the way that a lot of people think. If you get it, and you have the mechanics down pat, and you know exactly what you're doing, that shit will break. The problem is, it's very difficult to have enough pressure to keep someone from bridging. And a lot of times, the bridge will actually get them to free the elbow, or you'll have to decide uh, if your legs and your core and your hip pressure can't keep you on top, do I let go of this and post, or do I try to break his arm in one second? So, it ends up being a submission that against really good tough guys, you have to kind of like apply it extremely quickly, and you kind of have to just break their arm, and we don't really like to do that in training too much, you know? It's like mirror locking someone harder than fuck, and training isn't, it's impolite. You shouldn't really do it. Okay, but mechanically this was not the best uh, Americana anyways. Like, I know you're doing it fast, but really what makes the Americana super dangerous is keeping this wrist pinned down on the mat. So too many people start thinking about uh, like lifting up and they think all the pressure has to come from this lifting this way and that's not how a good Americana should be at all. You actually want to take this hand and just put your weight on it and actually pin that down. Pin this wrist to the mat and what you're going to do is with that pressure, you're actually gonna start to drag his arm backwards. So you're gonna take this elbow, and instead of just trying to apply pressure up here, you're gonna bring it down to his hips, and then you're gonna apply pressure. And if you actually take a second and do that motion, and keep it locked in place, level with your body, move it down, and then try to lift your elbow up, you can see you've lost all of your shoulder mobility. So that's proper mechanics, but again, you do have to do this fast. You could always just kind of rip it, and you could have always tried to really just drag that across into a quick armbar on the other side, but time is a pain. So, he is the king of mount escapes. I am looking forward to his mount escape DVD coming out soon. Um, big things that we're not doing quite well, and I know a lot of it is just the fact that it is extremely slippery on those mats right now, and this might even be laid into a training session, you're probably kind of tired, but you really need to develop a lot of isometric squeeze with your legs. And you've got to think about, it's not about like worried about getting tired, okay? If you're limiting your correct technique by worrying about your conditioning, you should just do more conditioning. Or you should just make yourself exhausted in your rounds and use that as your conditioning. You can genuinely condition isometric squeeze in live rolls, um, safely actually, because it's not squeezes that hurt people, it is momentum that hurts people. And it is dangerous submissions applied quickly that hurt people, you know? So, with that in mind, what I want you to kind of work on, okay, first, you need pinch pressure the whole time. You get in mount, I want you to squeeze so hard every round until your legs literally just fatigue and you can't squeeze anymore. You know, you have to learn how to do full squeezes with 100% everything you have, okay? And if you don't want to do that on people live rounds right away, just go squeeze a bob dummy or squeeze a... Uh, like sit on top of a punching bag and squeeze that or squeeze a medicine ball or go find a, a, a thigh master and I'm not even joking. Anything that gives you that adduction pressure is going to help you in this situation but you need to develop that and you can slowly develop it over the course of 20 years and you can be those old school black belts or you can fast track your pressure by working on it in, iso in isolation and that's what I do and that's the reason that I'm able to hold positions on people that you would think it would be very difficult to do. It's just, I think I consider it essential at a high level because really good people fight you f way more than you expect from positions you consider just yours already. 
So they always make you have to put an extra 20% of effort into holding something. And you have to do it before they start to get out because once they've started to move, they've already got their inches and if they're really good, they're probably gone, okay? Um, I really like the way you're walking this up and I like that you are, you know, constantly kind of cross pinning his arm and forcing him to reach across and defend something. I don't like that you stay down in the grapevines as much and I would really, really like to see you um, on top of squeezing, just kind of constantly climbing up to a high mount because you actually can just climb up, repinch, climb up again, slow little motions, repinch. And it doesn't always have to be uh, small gains. You know, it's like if you have this much space, go up to here and then repinch or fuck it, go all the way up to his shoulders. You already have the shoulder line completely taken away. That's the side you can get all the way up on and then you can just start focusing on the other side or you can use your pressure to start to turn the guy to the other side. And then we can start thinking about um, Kimura's, we can start thinking about chasing his back and gift wrapping him and we have a lot of options, arm bars. So that would be a good project for you to work on. He's a good training partner too because he is going to keep you honest on <laughs> whether you're squeezing him well enough or not. And this is a lesson guys in how to be a good training partner you should beat your training partner's ass a little bit because if he just is letting um, him hold him here, he's not going to get the right feedback, okay? And that means he's going to have a false sense of confidence in his bad technique, okay? And he won't be forced to improve it or seek better techniques to utilize in those same um, areas and same positions. So that's a problem, okay? And if you're not forcing people to use their technique correctly, a lot of times they just kind of won't. They may know what they're supposed to do. Uh, but if say they're the best guy in the room and they don't know how to train correctly in that situation, or they just don't know that they're not getting the right responses or, or whatever, you can see people kind of default to this lazy, oh, I'll squeeze when I really need to squeeze. But then they, they're not used to it anymore. You know, it's not normal. They have to think about it. You need to take pressures like this and do them and focus on them until you don't have to focus on them. I, I think about uh, like foreground processes and background processes. Right now, you're gonna have to think about it. And for the next couple weeks or a month, depending on how fast your learning curve is, you're gonna have to think about it until you don't. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna free up all of your mental focus to just start purely going on the offense, okay? I've done this from a lot of positions, any position that requires a consistent pressure and a lot of pressure, the kind of pressure you actually need to think about, you need to do, just do that until you don't think about it anymore. And then your brain is now free to uh, go after this shit. Look at that arm. Look at that beautiful angle and that shoulder climb you have available. So this was a lot of fun. Um, you sent me in another one to do, and I might get, that to get to that tomorrow when I'm a little more rested. I'm going to get to do this today. Um, you mentioned maybe coming out to train sometime. Dude, I would love to have you out. Uh, I will do my best to work with you on some nogi stuff and uh, I'll let you feel some squeeze pressure in person, assuming I can get them out, okay? And we can definitely work on a lot of stuff, man. Uh, you have a lot, you have a really good foundation to work from and that's my favorite kind of person to work with because I don't really like teaching basic fundamentals. I like taking people that have an idea and it might be a little bit of a wrong idea. There might be missing a few details and then you can just kind of steer the course or give them those details that are that you would consider game changing when you first learn them and then you can see how it just immediately elevates their game. So we'll have a good time, man. Otherwise, guys, remember the motto, okay? Let's not be toxic, okay? Let's optimize everything and be rational and let's eat our Panda Express. Have a good day. Bye, have a great time. All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget, we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free. So you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity. All right. We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos to rolling commentaries of your own to perks in the Discord channel. If you guys want to jump in, we have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at AndrewWilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube-friendly content. 
Currently, I'm at about 42,000 subscribers, and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So, uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high-quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.